Loma Linda, California, where suburban LA hits the desert. Here, a human population is forced to coexist with rattlesnakes, who have made this land their home for millions of years. Dealing with the victims requires medicine, science, and even aviation. Dr. Sean Bush heads a team whose knowledge is the best defense here on the front line, home of the Venom ER. The front line has many forms. It runs through the subdivision of Etiwanda, just 20 miles west of the hospital. Here, there are no barriers to a hunting Southern Pacific rattlesnake and huge opportunities. Gardens are oasis in the desert. Garbage draws in rodents, which draw in snakes. The circle completes at Rancho Cucamonga Fire Department. A snake bite means a call for help from Captain Mike Plume and his crew. We're responding to a reported snake bite at the forestry station on Etiwanda. One three is responding to the forestry station, possible snake bite. Nice. Kind of excited. As well as the fire truck, an ambulance is on scene. Pretty good bit. Okay, you having any pain? It's a Southern Pacific bite. It can cause swelling, bleeding, and lead to extreme reactions. You know, the, the gentleman here was bit by a snake in his foot. And he's having some pain in his foot, no trouble breathing. Pulse rate 100. Craig Stone is a healthy 43-year-old retail manager with venom in his bloodstream. Sir, do you know if you have any allergies yeah. to uh, bugs or snake bites yeah, or foot, anything like that? Yeah. Insects? Uh, yeah, bees. Bees? Yeah, the blood pressure. Well the team needs to know about any allergies. The body's reaction to the venom can be more dangerous than the toxins themselves. With the freeways clogged, a helicopter is the safest route to the hospital. Yeah, but what hospital are you taking him to? We're going to airlift him out, and I believe uh, right now we're going to go to Loma Linda. Sean Bush has been paged and is on his way. But between here and the ER, Craig can only have pain medication. The quicker Craig gets to the hospital, the sooner Sean can stop the damage. At Rancho Cucamonga Firehouse Number 4, the Mercy Air helicopter is ready to go. Sean Bush and the ER team are ready for a Southern Pacific case, and the anti-venom treatment starts just 90 minutes after Craig's bite. Yeah, that's, that's remarkable. You never saw him before he bit you. You just all of a sudden looked down, and there's a rattlesnake bite. Just, it felt like someone drove a nail through my foot. Craig's garden included a snake under his trash can. This is the kind of thing that just shouldn't happen. The venom has caused local swelling and overall numbness, but its progression is now being controlled. Thankfully, there's no allergic reaction to the treatment. The bite is a split-second strike, but the anti-venom is gently infused into the bloodstream through the night. Six hours later, Craig's leg is still severely swollen, but the venom's progression has been stopped in its tracks, just above the knee. And this is as far as the swelling's gotten, right here, huh? Yeah. Leg swelled up, he got a little bit of a coagulopathy and some mild fasciculations, but he got anti-venom and he's doing a lot better now. The system works. Get the patient in quickly. Get the medication on board. From fire crew to ER, Everyone should be pleased with this teamwork. The front line is huge, but Sean's hope is to get into the desert and start all treatments as soon as possible. The Air Division of the San Bernardino Sheriff's Department deals with the most extreme rescues, and Sean has joined up for volunteer shifts. All right, well, today's a big day. I do hoist training today. So very excited for my flight shift. Don't know what kind of runs we're gonna get, but it's sure to be exciting. Hook up the 
On Shift with Sean is experienced hand Dr. Leah Lynch. She's an attending physician in the Loma Linda ER. Um, but we'll have to pump up both of these little doohickeys here. Yep. And this is what takes a lot of power. All right. Okay, so I'm going to let you do this. Okay. All right. Keeping the helicopter in perfect flying condition is all part of the day. And that includes a little housekeeping with pilot Paul Howe. And you can be the rinse guy today, and I'll be the brush guy, and I'll soap it down and clean it up. Getting to know the Huey helicopter is vital. After 32 years in service, it's still saving lives at medical emergencies and fires. The hoist is key to rescues from forested slopes and mountain ravines. Deputy B.J. Milker is the expert. The ship sits a little low, it's not going to read true. Okay. So about a 45 degree angle sitting on this pad, and I check the oil levels. One is here. An emergency call may be miles from the nearest road, but the hoist can drop a medic right on the spot. And I have it on wide open here, and I'm... The steel cable is 250 feet long, and there's no safety line, so maintaining it in perfect condition is essential. My elbow here. It's a meticulous briefing of almost an hour. Right there. Well, it's a lot of information to take in all at once. Uh, I feel like I'm a little bit on information overload, but uh, hopefully I'll remember the salient points and be able to, to perform the job here. The job is done with a harness, but it can be a scramble to get on. Every once in a while, I'll get lifted off the ground, and I'll find out I'm not dressed <laughs> the right way. So I, I'll have to yank one down and adjust so it doesn't kill me by the time I get up on top. Sure. On all your points here. Yeah. Okay. And finally, there's the collapsible stretcher. That will lift the patient up into the helicopter. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this basket coming into the ER, but uh, I always kind of wondered how it got assembled that way. So. I feel like I'm learning a little bit more about the process, which is, which is why I wanted to do this in the first place. There's a lot to learn. He's doing great. I mean, every time you review it, you learn something new. And I think from, for Sean, it's nice to hear it from BJ's point of view, because he's the crew chief. But since we're the ones on the hoist, I can give him some ideas of what it feels like to actually be going down, too. And uh, just the little tricks that I've learned when I'm, when I'm going down the hoist and how to prepare myself for it. The blades are spinning. It's time for Sean's first drop. As the experienced hand, Leah is the first onto the skid, but Sean's having trouble with his headset. He'll have to go now. Emergencies don't wait. Stepping out into the blast of the rotors is quite an experience. In a real rescue, there may be trees and mountain precipices to avoid too. There's the signal for a safe arrival, but that headset still needs fixing. Now the medicine starts. They'll check the patient for injuries, assess the pain level, and get the stretcher down. Now the helicopter moves off as the medics get to work. Snake bites can be intensely painful. The victim will need medication and may be in shock or have complications. When the helicopter returns, it's perfectly positioned by pilot Paul Howe, 20 years of experience in action. With the patient secured in the air, the next task is to recover the doctors, another test for the hoist. With Sean safely on board, there's a surprise for Leah. The helicopter is going up. 
At 250 feet, they've paid out the entire run of the hoist cable, a test of its strength and Leah's nerve. It's a different form of frontline medicine, but she's up to it. Training is over. That was awesome. I mean, that was a, a lot of fun. It really was. It was, uh, it was way cool. It's kind of a leap of faith, you know? And uh, it definitely squeezes on your adrenals. And this team opens up a huge new opportunity for Sean. With that hoist, you can get down there in places where other helicopters can't reach, where, where, where nobody can reach, where no ground ambulance, where people can't even hike out. We're going to be able to get to those people and, uh, and help them. And I'm going to get to learn more about true, true wilderness medicine. The wilderness draws Sean because it's out here that a snake bite is the hardest to treat. Michael Curran experiences its power when Venom ER returns here on Animal Planet. Just 30 miles north of the Venom ER, the Mojave Desert has been snake country for millions of years, but people are moving in, thousands every year. Now the snakes cross human habitats. People and snakes are destined to collide. Next morning, there's an early start for Sean Bush, leaving home at 6.30 a.m. A new patient, right. Mike Curran, has come in from the desert. Oh, he drove himself. Oh, that's not the right thing to do. All right. Well, I'll be right down. I'm on my way. I'll be there by 7. Mike went into a desert hospital overnight, then decided to make the two-hour drive to the experts in Loma Linda. Morning. How are you doing? Bush. Was that snake bit in hand? No. no. He knew he'd been bitten by a sidewinder, the smallest rattlesnake in the area. The one that bit Mike probably weighed just five ounces, 600 times less than Mike. Yet the venom in his body is enough to hospitalize him. Does it hurt? Tell me when it starts to hurt. Right, right about like right here. Let's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step it off. I'm gonna get right, right where it hurts. Okay. Have it right here. No. Have it right here. It starts hurting right there. Here. It all happened in a split second, almost 16 hours ago. here. Mike's a builder living on the edge of a desert town. But for the snakes, his yard is just another piece of habitat, one with plenty of rodents to hunt. Encounters can be dangerous and painful. That hurt? Sorry about that. Okay. There's, there's the puncture wound, okay. Still oozing a little serous fluid. Okay, but no blood. And you said his labs look normal, huh? His deep dimer is 0.7. Well, here's what we're going to do. We, uh, you got the initial dose of anti-venom out there. Do you know what time that went in? Mike's had two courses of anti-venom in the desert hospital, but it hasn't cleared the sidewinder venom. The ER team will continue the work, but the treatment will take a long time to administer. You got eight out there. They give you like, two doses of four. Right? Yeah, okay. Exactly. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to give you two vials every six hours for a total of three doses, and we're going to keep you here in the ER that whole time. Snakes are master predators, fast, flexible, and heavily armed. Even experienced desert people like Mike can get bitten. More proof that everyone needs to respect and avoid snakes. A week later, he's well enough to tell the whole story. 
Okay, the snake was right out over here, coiled up in the yard, sunning itself. I had a snake rod at the time, held the snake down just like this, and I reached down and picked it up by the back of the neck, was holding it, getting ready to put it in the bucket, and then my son and my son-in-law walked up and said, wanted to see it, so I'm going, showed it to him for a second, and I'm holding it too tight, worried about hurting them. Because they're very delicate, so I loosened it up, and he struck me with one tooth right in this area right here. A split-second lapse of concentration is all a snake needs. 20 minutes later, it started itching really bad. We went to the doctors, and 16 vials of antivenom later, <laughs> I'm all fine, yeah, so. And like I say, and that was from a little tiny snake with only one fang. A yard like this will actually draw in the snakes, hunting for mice. There's a lot of rodents inside the place, and the snakes love that. They have a lot of hiding places, a lot of places they can stay in the shade during the heat of the day. We, on the average, see a snake at least four or five times a week out here. Mike's lived in the desert for 18 years, but now more people are moving into his neighborhood. Growth rate is very high. You know, on the average, uh, probably last month, over, over 2,000 permits were probably pulled for this area. The habitat for the snakes are diminishing, you know, and, and what's bad is more and more people kill them than, you know, protect them. You just leave them alone and give them more habitat. It's beneficial for everybody. But there's a huge conflict as people build on snake territory. Out here, you have to know and respect your reptiles. Kids have a fascination with snakes. And the hospital's Children's Day is coming up, the perfect opportunity for Sean to get the message across. His wife, Amy, helps out on the event, and there's a whole collection of snakes to show. Together, the bushes are quite a double act. He gets the sports car, she gets the truck. Today, 1,500 kids will visit the hospital lawn. Any one could have a chance encounter with a rattlesnake in the wild or in their backyard and end up in Sean's care. His advice can help avoid that. We're gonna talk about snake safety today. I wanna tell you the first thing I want you to learn is never to touch a snake because it could bite you and you could get hurt. That could be poisonous. It could be poisonous and this is what can happen if a snake bites you. This is a little girl I treated with a snake bite. And she's okay now, but her finger really swelled up and it bled and it hurt a lot. And that's because the snake bit her. Or you can die. Or you can die, that's even worse. It's a tough lesson, but Sean believes the kids need to understand the dangers they may face. It's the only way to be safe. So I want everybody to tell me what you do if you step too close to a rattlesnake. Step back, Jack. Step back, Jack, that's right. If you get bitten by a rattlesnake, I want you to go to the hospital. So now I want to do a little more audience participation here. If you're bitten by a snake, I want you to tell me, go to the hospital. There are kids and parents who have faced the trauma of a snake bite. Their personal stories are coming up on Venom ER. Knowledge is what will keep these kids safe from snake bites. And Sean's past patients can help prevent a bite case in the future. Hey, Jenny, how are you doing? Good to see you. Jenny Good Hollis is a former patient. Her father, Terry, moved his family into the desert. And two years ago, a Mojave rattlesnake bit Jenny. It felt like someone took a rock and just, like, threw it at my leg, and I kind of, like, lost my balance. And, like, I kind of looked down for a second, and I saw a snake. And at first, like, an ambulance came out and fire trucks, and then a helicopter flew in and flew me to the hospital. It's a frightening experience for a parent, too. Before it lifted off, I tried to get into it, and the guy 
grabbed me from behind and asked me where I was going. And I said, you know, I was going with her on the helicopter, and he said there was no room uh, with all the equipment. You need to drive. And I said, it's an hour and a half drive by car. They packed her in in a dust cloud. They took off. Uh, she looked dead. And I thought, I lost Jenny. This was the closest I've ever seen to death yeah. in my life. But seeing somebody like that, especially my daughter, that close within a half an hour of being bitten shows you how lethal a snake that thing is. Not, not, yeah, that's Mojave. For sure. Yeah, it's Mojave Green. Decapitated. No, no the head's still there. Careful. Yeah. Wow, that's a good Because it's cut in half. At first, I didn't really know how dangerous it was until I realized, like, doctors were rushing this way and that, like, yelling at each other, telling them to go do this and that. And then I realized this is, like, serious. Jenny recovered, and now her father, Terry, is determined to defend his family. A lot better now. This year, we've had a lot of rain, and the vegetation is very thick, and we've already encountered three Mojave greens right around our house. If I see a sidewinder uh, or a small western diamondback, I'll capture it, but if it's a Mojave green, I get my shovel out. You're not gonna stop them from coming around the house, but I, I think if I'm able to cut down all of the vegetation, get to the dirt, it gives you a little bit of an advantage if the snake moves. Their rattle is your cue to go the opposite way. The day ends with lessons learned. Sean's talked to hundreds of kids, and if he's prevented just one bite, he's achieved his goal. There's a lot for people to learn about a rich variety of venomous animals. As well as snakes, there are spiders. Black widows are common in backyards and even inside houses. Sean needs to know his spiders, too. His biggest problem is the brown recluse. It has potent venom, but even more concerning is its unjustified, fearsome reputation. That makes every case unpredictable. Hi there. Okay. Dr. Bush, I heard you got a spider bite. Is that right? 19-year-old Summerlee Gardner has come into the ER with a painful abdominal swelling. This one was like on my like right here and I went to move it like to try to get it off me and it like leaped over to right there and it bit me and I felt it and I like the only thing I could do was squish it. Yeah. Spiders are venomous. And although the venom's not designed to kill a human, it can provoke a severe reaction. I just noticed that it got like a hard bump, but then it just kept getting bigger and bigger and hurting worse and making me like more nauseous and I just like started to get really sick and my friends brought me down here and said you have to go down there. Pain, is it pain, painful over here? No, it's just one sharp pinch. It's all it. <laughs> does it hurt when I push on your belly over here? Or just no. is it mostly around the side? It's just right here, all the way down. Uh -huh. Like right here. All right, all right. <laughs> what does the spider look like? It was brown and it had like a like a pointy butt, but it was real fat. And it had like white, like a white V neck, V or something. I don't remember. It was like brown though, it was huge. Do you have any other symptoms? Many spiders are brown. But the reputation of the brown recluse and its potent venom has grown out of all proportion. Many patients think they've been bitten by one, even though it doesn't live in California at all. Sean's checks must address this concern. Now, you saw this spider jump on you, and, and you saw it bite you, huh? Yeah, no, I felt it. Or I you didn't felt see it. it bite me, but I felt it. Uh, you don't happen to have a spider. <laughs> We're going to give you some antibiotics and some pain. Treating spider bites is difficult. It's hard to diagnose the wound, and only black widows are covered by an anti-venom. But Sean can deal with the infection, whatever the possible cause. Well, I, I don't really know if it's a spider bite or not. I mean, she believes that a spider bitter is very common for people to believe that they've been bitten by a brown recluse spider, even in places where the spider doesn't live. In fact, it's overdiagnosed in epidemic proportions by doctors across the United States. And the fact is, in this immediate area, there are no recluse spiders. It's because Sean understands the animals, reads the latest scientific literature, and works with spider experts that he can be so certain. I took any time to the ER. Less than one hour after she was admitted to the ER, Summerlee is safe to head off home with her antibiotics. 
Many people have a very real fear of insect stings or spider bites. And when it comes to rattlesnakes, that fear is certainly justified. We just don't know enough about their venom or the bite event itself. Okay. Pass me the saline, would you? In the Loma Linda University Thanks. Snake Lab, yeah, they need to know whether or not clothing offers okay. any what, protection at all. Yeah. Eric Dugan and Scott Herbert right. will recreate a bite situation and measure the amount of venom the strike delivers. It's collected in a okay. saline solution contained uh, in a latex surgical there. glove. By putting some gloves yeah, inside yeah. a denim pouch, they can see how much venom gets through. Okay, come on, fellas. Something big and nasty. It's nasty. It's gonna get you. That's the ticket. Oh. Yeah, we got one. We got one. The choice between shorts and jeans may be crucial in a bite. The researchers themselves okay, always great, wear great. thick chaps over any trousers when they're in the field. He's gonna cow. I He's not gonna do He's it. Cow. Not every snake will strike. But taking samples from a range of snakes and comparing the venom in normal and protected gloves, they'll get the data they need. The bites may deliver anything from 30 to 300 milligrams of lethal venom. And with samples from 12 different snakes, the detailed analysis can begin. The venom is separated out from the collecting fluid, and the amount in each bite is measured. They know that bigger snakes generally deliver more venom, but this work shows that denim may significantly reduce the amount of venom actually injected, especially in snakes less than 21 inches long. Then, the fangs may not be able to deliver a full venom dose. Protecting humans from the power of rattlesnake venom is the ultimate challenge for the team. But amazingly, there is a small mammal with no fear of rattlesnakes. Find out which one when Venom ER returns on Animal Planet. Rattlesnakes and ground squirrels have been predator and prey for millions of years. And although baby squirrels are vital to some snakes' diet, the adults are immune to the venom. It's an astonishing ability when a human can die from a snake bite. So Sean needs to know what's so special about the squirrels. That involves a trip to the University of California at Davis near Sacramento where scientist Barbara Klukas studies the squirrels well, that survive a snake bite. Um, this first one here is of a rock squirrel, a closely related species wow. to the California ground squirrels. And as you can see, it was struck in the chest. Most likely it was going bipedal to, to watch the snake. Yeah. And wow, I, he, didn't, he didn't look like he has a lot of tissue injury there. I just got, you see the fang puncture wounds, but not a lot of destruction there. That's, that's pretty impressive. Here's another one. Um, the wound is in the lower part of the, uh, the body. And these guys are tolerating the bites just fine, huh? Yes, these both of them were females, and they um, were fine other than the wound itself. Do so you think that a, a strike like that would just take these squirrels out? Yeah, they, they don't have the, the negative effects that the humans do. That's amazing. The squirrels have a whole range of different behaviors to survive snake encounters. So what we see here is a rattlesnake coming in and several adult ground squirrels um, tail flagging 
and probing the um, rattlesnake. Snake's going after them. Though. Yeah, so they uh, they want to probe and assess the rattlesnake and see how dangerous it is. And also, what they're trying to do is mob it and scare the uh, rattlesnake so that it'll leave their burrow system. A rattlesnake is an ambush hunter, but the squirrels are making it clear they've blown its cover. The more they pester the rattlesnake, the uh, more likely it will leave the area. It doesn't want to be harassed. The adult squirrels assess the danger, throwing dirt to make the snake rattle. That will tell them how dangerous it is. Ground squirrels are able to assess the size and temperature of a rattlesnake by the sound of its rattle. They're able to extract how dangerous the rattlesnake is from hearing the rattle. And in a minute here, the ground squirrel will actually go out and attack the end of the rattlesnake. Yep, there you go. So and the rattlesnake defended itself by coiling up and doing a strike. The snake got the squirrel, but the squirrel will survive due to a factor in its blood. Squirrels have developed some extreme snake-related behavior. So the footage we have here is of a rock squirrel that is um, chewing on a rattlesnake shed and applying it to its skin. We term this snake scent application behavior. Now why, why does the squirrel want to smell like a rattlesnake? The rock squirrels are trying to mask their own odor so that um, rattlesnakes can't find them because rattlesnakes use chemocentric cues to find the rock squirrels. So it's kind of like the wolf dressed in sheep's clothing. But the prey is hiding amongst the predators. Actually, a sheep in wolf's clothing. Evolution has formed a mammal with natural immunity to rattlesnake venom. The challenge is for medicine to match it. Venom is a mighty opponent. It challenges the rules of science. Sean's response draws on all his skills. He's got the training to quickly get into the front line. He's got the medical expertise to save lives. And most importantly, he knows his snakes. By sharing his knowledge, he encourages people to be more aware of them and their threat. But that can bring some risky encounters. His neighbors Roy and Tawny Wilson have snagged a large Southern Pacific rattlesnake from the backyard of a very alarmed neighbor. Roy has the equipment to catch a snake, but not the expertise to release it safely away from home. All right, well, let me get him transferred. To be safe, Sean has to see it clearly by transferring it to a bigger, clearer container, and that means getting it out. You got it, but it's big. Okay, hang on, watch out, watch out. Right there. Okay, we're gonna get back. Get back to that. Oh, yeah, he's a big one. Yeah, he, he's the fattest one I've seen. He's the, uh... Watch out. I mean, he was scarier. I'll get up. <laughs> Whew, oops. There you go. Yeah, that's a big Southern Pacific. Pretty big guy. He's fat. He's not happy to see us, though. Go ahead and leave it. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. I think he's the biggest one we've ever seen, don't you think? Yeah. They're so scary. It's like the one that bit our pit bull. The battle between rattlesnake venom and the ground squirrel's immunity even happens around Roy's house. We've had, the other day I counted, seven ground squirrels running in the backyard. I've never seen that. Usually we'll see two or three in a day at the very most. When we first moved here 15, 16 years ago, we used to see rattlesnakes all the time. No ground squirrels. Now it seems like the snakes are slowly coming back. But also the, the neighborhood is changing. They're learning to, through you, you know, not to be so quick to kill them. Yeah. All right, well, I'll go turn this guy loose somewhere. You know, Dr. Bush, I really appreciate you doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, uh, this is a service that nobody, nobody gets like this. Well, this is wonderful. It's, I get a kick out of it, so thanks a lot. All right. Around Loma Linda, Sean's mission for awareness seems to be succeeding. Next morning, it's a holiday weekend. Sean's first job is to safely dispose of a living firework back in its home territory. 
that means getting close to a very angry snake. When Venomy R returns on Animal Planet. Sean is releasing a Southern Pacific rattlesnake back to the wild. He needs to find good habitat, a safe distance from housing. Yeah, this looks like the same kind of terrain. It's not too far. And it has to be a good spot right here. There has to be enough food, small rodents and young ground squirrels that haven't developed immunity yet. All right, well, turn you loose here. The snake is still aggressive. It has to sense its surroundings. It will pick up the scent of prey and other snakes. Well, it should be at home here. We got the wilderness back behind me, and we got civilization right over there, and and uh, we got this rattlesnake right in between. It's the perfect place for a Southern Pacific. He's slate gray because these snakes like to live in the cooler parts of Southern California, like higher elevation like we're here at now and uh, along the coast. And that's why they run into people so much. But it's, uh, I like him. I think it's a pretty looking snake. And I think he'll do fine out in this environment. You can see he survived a long time, and I think he'll keep on surviving. As the snake settles into home territory, the Mercy Air crew based at Mojave is testing a new helicopter for their desert area. This holiday weekend is always a busy one. With paramedic Paul Romero, our pilot Pete Hall, and flight nurse Ken McFarland. His key task right now is to set up radio communications. They'll be on standby for the next 12 hours, ready for the calls as people get out into snake country. But for here, the weather's perfect. The lakes, the rivers, the ocean is in perfect condition for bringing out every single toy you got. Load up the truck with the kids, and, uh, and it's just a big recipe for, for trouble and risk taking. There's lots of hiking, there's lots of ATVing and dirt biking. It's one of those weekends where uh, there is potential for, uh, for major devastation. The weather is warm, not hot, and that draws out the crowds and the snakes. Sean and Amy have headed for the parade in the town of Redlands, but he's still on call and snakes are never far from his mind. In fact, rattlesnakes have been part of American history since the first U.S. flag. Well, you, the, the weather's great. Everybody's looking up in the air, looking at fireworks, and they're not watching where they're walking, and uh, snakes are out later at night. It's still real hot in the evening, but then as, as the night goes on, it cools off, the snakes come out, and people are out later than usual this time of year. And so they step on snakes, and, and plus they're drinking beer, celebrating, and, and handling snakes. You know, the two go hand in hand. The first call arrives. The helicopter has brought in the latest child patient for the team in the ER. Seven-year-old Olivia Razo. 
Her pain is being controlled by medication, and Sean checks in for more details. Hi, it's Dr. Bush. I was paged. Yeah, I was just out having, having some barbecue at a 4th of July celebration. What you got? She's come in from the high desert. Ah, uh, from Lucerne Valley? Yeah, that's Mojave rattlesnake country. How's she doing? Well, I wouldn't expect too much swelling. Yeah, I'd start off with six files. All right, I'll see you in about half an hour. All right, bye. The team can start the anti-venom treatment. So, and it hits you right here on the foot, huh? It just tape, baby. Now, Janie, do you want to draw a lab? OK, we will order some labs. And then uh, one hour later, we have some progression. So I mean, that's evidence of progression. And there's still venom at work digesting away the tissue. So we want to stop that. It's July 4th. And predictably, we've got a snake bite patient. And this time, it's a 7-year-old girl. She's bitten on the ankle by what sounds like a Mojave rattlesnake. It's up in Lucerne Valley. She doesn't have a lot of swelling so far, but the swelling can be deceptive after Mojave rattlesnake bite because they usually don't get a lot of swelling. They just get systemic neurological toxicity, and it's a very dangerous snake. Mojave venom hits the nerves, but this was thankfully a mild bite. Now, the medication is controlling Olivia's pain. And the Crofab is slowing the venom progression in her leg. We're going to treat her with lots of fluid, and she's requiring a lot of pain medicine because it hurts. But we're not seeing a lot of tissue destruction, and that's a good thing. Meanwhile, we're going to keep her in the hospital overnight and keep a close eye on her. Olivia will be well looked after by the holiday shift in the pediatric ER. Out in the foothills, the snakes emerge in the evening dangerous, yet slow moving, easy to pick up, but striking faster than you can react. This weekend celebrations continue until the second call comes in. There's another emergency when Venom ER returns on Animal Planet. It's the 4th of July, but Sean's heading into the ER again. He never stops. The Mercy Air Team at Mojave were ready when the call came, and they've flown Josh Pretzer into Loma Linda. His first treatment was in a desert hospital, but he's reacting to the anti-venom, so they've transferred him to the Venom ER team. Sean has to know all the details. So you got about three vials. You got a total of ten. Ten vials of anti-venom is a large dose, but it's barely keeping his symptoms under control. Okay, you gave him 25 Benadryl, 125 Solumedrol, 0.1 of Ken provides all the information. This was a big snake and Sean will have to assess the patient before they can proceed. Pretty much appropriate when considering the blood alcohol level sure. as far as cementation goes. His blood alcohol is high. It won't affect the treatment, but it may have helped to cause the bite. He's had a bit to drink. Alcohol doesn't affect the envenomation per se. People used to think that alcohol was the first aid for snake bite, but it doesn't work. Um, what it does do is it lowers your inhibitions and it makes it more likely for you to get a, a snake bite. Oh, ow, 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 ow. The main concern is how far the venom has progressed. Right there. Yeah. Six hours after the bite, 
Josh has the classic symptoms of a Southern Pacific snake bite. Timber rattlesnake is colloquially known. And then to the guy that does uh, anti His case is a valuable learning experience for Sean's junior team member, Eugene Hu. Let me, uh, let me have you look at something here, Dr. Hu. All right. Hold it, hold his hand there. Something, you notice something about that? Hold it, please. Don't look at it. Just sit there and feel it and look away. What's happening to his hand? It's trembling. It's trembling, right? But those are muscle fasciculations. as the involuntary twitching of the muscles caused by snake venom. Under Sean's mentoring, Eugene has gained more experience, and the team now has the situation under control. You mean the hospital for a couple of days, sir? The next morning, things are already looking better. It looks like uh, Josh's labs are coming back to normal, but uh, it was a really serious envenomation. He had fasciculation, swelling, abnormal labs, but his coagulopathy is resolving, and I think he's going to do fine. Southern Pacific venom causes the most unpredictable cases for Sean's team, and there can be no single response. Because venom is perfectly designed to kill, the team needs an array of approaches to combat its threat. The emergency teams must respond fast to minimize tissue damage. Sean can't make any assumptions about the potency of different bites. A small snake can incapacitate a big man. He needs to increase snake awareness for everyone who lives here. He needs support from scientists working on bite dynamics or how other mammals react to the venom. Sean knows that this knowledge can save lives. And the more people know about snake bites, the greater the odds that lives will be saved. Here in the Venom ER.